are these people? Um, Oppenheimer uh, has been has been out. New Christopher Nolan film. Um, did you did you actually watch it, Jose, while you were there? Um, you you step into I, the I watched it twice. Room. Yeah. How much how much popcorn cost you? Uh, way too. I'm much? an AMC Stubbs member, man. I get free refills. Nice. Um, <laughs> so, did you see Barbie while you were there, or did you do the double? No, I did not see Barbie. Good for you. Um, <laughs> even though I know you're a fan of Ryan Gosling, it's okay, you know. Um, but anyway, so this is a report by Connor Eccles that I found through Antiwar.com. Uh, they're showcasing responsible statecraft, which does some pretty good work. Um, so he writes, what Oppenheimer leaves out, the three hour long movie has gripping drama and important history, but ignores the first victims of the nuclear era. Um, on July 16th, 1945, the world ended, or at least it seemed that way to residents of the Tularosa Basin in New Mexico. Unbeknownst to local civilians, J. Robert Oppenheimer had chosen their backyard as the proving ground for the world's first nuclear weapon. The explosion which U.S. officials publicly claimed to be an accident at a local ammunition depot, tore through the morning sky, leaving a 40,000-foot-tall cloud of radioactive debris that would cake the surrounding area with dust for days on end, and I'm sure years on end. This is, this is the explosion, in case people were wondering what that looked like. Uh, that's a 40,000-foot-tall tower of death. Um, is that the Trinity test? Yes, sir. Is that the, the, the test they did? Yep. High def uh, redo. Um, this next Damn, one is the one that 4K. gets me the uh, the close one. If we can get to it, whenever that happens. Um, that one is always the oh. crazy one. Uh, that is the air exploding inside that shockwave. Yeah. You know, this is how nuclear weapons work. They they make the air explode. That's what they do. That's how much energy they produce. People become an, an right. open air oven. That's yeah, what people are. become the fuel. It ignites anything, like, in its wake. So, yeah, super nice. And then on top of that, it leaves radioactive debris that then can affect the ecosystem for centuries, pretty much. Um... Because, you know, radioactive tends to have a long half-life. Um, that's why we're using these. So, Tina Cordova, whose home, hometown of Tularosa lies just 45 miles from ground zero, remembers her grandmother's stories about wiping that infernal dust off every nook and cranny of her childhood home. No one knew what had happened quite yet, but they figured it must have been something special. After all, a local paper reported that the explosion was so bright that a blind woman had actually seen it. When the initial shock wore off, the 40,000 locals who lived within 50 miles of Ground Zero returned to their daily lives. 50 miles. They drank from cisterns full of radioactive debris, ate beef from cattle that had grazed on the dust for weeks on end, and breathed air full of tiny plutonium particles. Only later would the real impact become clear. Bernice Gutierrez, born just eight days after Oppenheimer's Trinity test, moved from a small town near the blast site to Albuquerque, where she was two years old. Uh, cancer followed her like a specter. Her great-grandfather died of stomach cancer in the early 1950s. She lost cousins to leukemia and pancreatic cancer. Her oldest son died in 2020 after a bout with pre-leukemia. Blood disorder in, t in total, 21 members of Gutierrez's family have had cancer, and seven have died from it. We don't ask ourselves if we're going to get cancer, Gutierrez told RS. We asked ourselves when, because it just never ends. Oppenheimer, the latest film from fave director Christopher Nolan, is a three-hour-long exploration of the dilettante, womanizer, communist sympathizer, and world historic genius behind the ultimate weapon. The movie, based on the book American Prometheus, delves deeply into Oppenheimer's psyche, from his struggles as a young student at Cambridge to his profound melancholy over the world he helped create. Yet nowhere in the film will viewers find an acknowledgement of the first victims of the nuclear era. Indeed, the movie repeats the myth that the bomb site was in a desolate area with nothing for 40 miles in either direction. This was not for lack of effort, according to Cordova, who leads an activist group called the Tularosa Basin Downwinders Consortium. 
downwinders refers to those who live in the fallout zone of nuclear tests. So here you are, Jose, out in front of AMC Theater, and you're handing out flyers for what? This uh, Humanity for Humanity. Peace organization? Or uh, event, I guess? It's actually a coalition of like every organization in, around the world, every single one. But that, that wants that wants to sign on. Not every organization in the world, but like you know, ones sure. that stand for peace and are anti-war and have agreed to sign on. And there's more logos. That's just the ones we could fit right. on the paper. So. Yeah, you can throw ours into the mix, probably. Um, but sure. here you are. Okay, I, have... Ooh, I can help this because you're in New York Wind, the New York Wind Tunnel. Um, let's try yeah. that. Uh, we also have a little message in the back for people who are here to see the Oppenheimer film. It's a very good film, and I urge everyone to watch it. But what we're doing is we want people who are going to see the film or have seen the film uh, get this leaflet because that audience of people who actually get something out of the film, which the main message is we shouldn't blow ourselves up, should be coming to the August 6th Humanity for Peace rally and so we're out here organizing where the people are who are coming to see a politically conscious film about the end of the world through nuclear bombs which is where we are right now so please if you can come to the un on august 6th please be sure to do so as we demonstrate to the world we want peace not destruction yep so i endorse that message yeah uh, you do I, uh, <laughs> I'm running for president and i endorse this message um but <laughs> anyway oh let me go back here and then here and then back here cool um whenever that catches up there you go oh you also had your your buddy kyle was out there right um i Kynan, believe yeah. all right yep. y'all today we're in front of amc lincoln square Distributing our Humanity for Peace leaflet. It's going to be a rally on August 6th. Warren and Costco could have hooked you up with some color Wars. prints, huh? And it's really prescient that like, this film was made today know, because people don't know goes. about this danger, you know? They don't know the fact that we shouldn't have dropped the atomic bomb in 1945 because Eisenhower MacArthur knew it was militarily unnecessary in an oh. an age where people are afraid of dying today. So we're out here. I'm with my friend Jose Big and, and a bunch of other friends. People should come out here, come to our rally. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, thoughts so far, guys? Uh, I, mean, I mean, this is what you're kind of promoting, the idea of, like, if we continue to escalate with Ukraine, we're going to see some of those bombs. And, I wouldn't be so, and it wouldn't be too shocking at this point if we have one of those bombs set off here in this country. Uh, exactly. So, you know, so I think I feel like it's almost kind of the cognitive dissonance of people watching this movie and them saying they like it, but not necessarily making the connection that that might happen to us if we're not careful. And so, and you know, like people are like, "Yeah, Russia bad," and like all this kind of stuff. That's fine. Well, not fine, but yeah, we know like. We go and I go back and forth, but like, you know, but Putin's his own guy or Russian whatever. Scum. <laughs> but <laughs> we have to first account. We have to first account for our own leadership and our own government and our own country first before we start talking about, you know, of other countries and the fact that we've been very trigger happy in, yeah. like pursuing the idea of escalating when we should be in a position where we should be calling for ceasefire. Um, like uh, with Russia regarding Ukraine, I think, I think people are not making that connection at all. Um, so, it, you know, this is kind of a, it's kind of, I don't think it's, I think it's coincidental that this movie has come out as it did, but people are not making that connection that, that can that's what to us. that's what we're we're trying to make that connection because in the back of that leaflet we put a text that says you are about to film you are about to watch a film about one of the most important events ever 
um, the dropping of the bomb in Hiroshima in 1945, a decision that didn't need to happen. I don't remember what else it says. It's like three paragraphs long. So we're kind of attempting to bridge the gap. On the movie itself, when I was out there leafleting, there was like some kid who came out who was like 19, 20 years old. Happen. Uh oh. Why you freeze, Jose? Hello. Here you are. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry. So there was like some nineteen-year-old kid who came out of the theater, and I asked him, like, "So did you see the film?" And he said, "Yeah, man. Like, damn, man. Like, I'm shocked. Like, that ending was like, it hit me hard because I think that's real. I don't. Have you guys seen the movie? Are you planning on seeing the movie?" Uh, I have probably seen it within yet, the next but, week or so. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see it. But I'm good on spoilers if people want to, you know, spoiler alert. Uh, you All know right. Well, I mean? it's not. It's not a huge. It's not a huge spoiler. It's not really a spoiler. But like, basically, it's just Oppenheimer and Einstein talking, and they're like, Einstein's like, "Yes, how can I help you?" And uh, Oppenheimer's like, "When I gave you those calculations that we might blow up the atmosphere by igniting a nuclear chain reaction that would never stop, we thought we would blow up the world, but we didn't." We were wrong. And Einstein said, yes, but actually, I think we did blow up the world. And then it cuts to, like, missiles being shot up. And the idea was that, like, you know, the world's going to end because of a nuclear war. war. And the, the movie kind of does. Yeah. This is the, the Earth. They genuinely freaked out about it. And I was like, good. Here's a leaflet for you. We're having this channel here into something because right now we are on the verge of nuclear war because of this ukraine russian misstep war that's that's happening right now any small misstep okay can trigger a nuclear war i i didn't mean to do this to the kid but like i said like it's a miracle we haven't been blown up already because we have less communications with the russians today than we did back when kennedy was president and reagan was president middle okay? of the cold war we have like almost yeah yeah and so the kid was like even more freaked out i was like well, i you know i didn't you know but hey you, know, you gotta wake people up to the realities of this there's a certain usefulness to the film i mean i i i i read what you what you showed at, at the beginning of the segment about the downwind not getting their voice and yeah i, I yeah maybe he you know and I, I don't know a difficult thing with what you decide to put in the film because he oh there we go he doesn't even know the Japanese getting blown up, but he does something where you know they get blown up, and he also does something where his own conscience is like eating at him. Uh, I, I don't want to spoil anymore. All I can say is like, can be a tool if people make it a tool and do urge right now of blowing ourselves up because of the ukraine russia war right now and you need to act because biden will fall asleep on the button or something and blow us all up might trip and fall break his hip on it um yeah uh, <laughs> That'd be messed up. this uh article continues just a little bit more um so when nolan teams got to new mexico to film uh downwinder cordova and her team published an op-ed in the local newspaper that called on the oppenheimer crew to grapple with the consequences of confronting the truth of our stories, of our history. When that didn't work, she reached out to the production team through Kai Bird, the journalist who co-wrote American Prometheus, in an attempt to get a meeting. She received a flat no. Um, Cordova said she was aggravated, angry, and disappointed. The filmmakers had come to New Mexico to shoot the movie and rake in state-funded tax breaks but showed little interest in engaging with local locals affected by Oppenheimer's work. Tens of millions of people are going to flock to theaters to see the movie, and a lot of them have never been exposed to this history, she added. A short mention at the end of the movie could have changed that, Cordova argues. Universal Pictures, which produced the film, also did not respond to a request for a comment from RS. Uh, her concerns are not just about recognition in 1990, Congress passed the Radiation Exposure Compensation Act, which gave insurance and lump sum payments to the people affected by decades of nuclear testing at the Nevada test site, and I think as well the Hawaiian test site at Bikini Atoll, right? Um, I do believe. 
um, RECA payouts to date total more than $2.5 billion, but New Mexican downwinders were not included in the original law or a broader version of it passed in 2000, a fact that former New Mexico Governor Bill Richardson attri attributes to a simple lack of awareness about their plight. Cordova and her team have lobbied for years for an expanded version of RECA that would include New Mexican downwinders and some previously ineligible uranium miners, many of whom had little knowledge of just how dangerous their work was. A bipartisan group of lawmakers introduced an RECA expansion bill earlier this month, Imagine having radioactive waste fall down like dirty snow on your homes and communities causing cancer and disease, said Rep. Teresa Ledger Fernandez, who supported the bill in the House in a statement. Think, uh, then think about the despair when you learn that the U.S. government compensated other communities exposed to radiation during the nuclear testing program, but not yours. Lawmakers have introduced mm. similar proposals several times in recent years, but... With limited public awareness behind their efforts, the proposal has never quite gotten enough support in Congress to pass. Always just enough to not, right? It's an inconvenient truth, Cordova said. People just don't want to reflect on the fact that American citizens were bombed at Trinity. Born in 1947. Or poisoned in, the same. Yep. Sorry. Or poisoned in East Palestine. Or yeah, poisoned yes. in Flynn. Yeah, yeah. Or, you know, you can Pick poison one, right? in New York. So, in Almogordo, New Mexico, yeah, during, just inconvenient that people have to think about suffering in this yep. country based on our own government. Ugh. So, John Greenwood grew up in a short distance from the Trinity test site. Years of radiation exposure caught up with him in 2008 when he was first diagnosed with colon cancer. Greenwood and his family spent four years fighting for his life. Their insurance covered 80% of costs, but the remaining 20% added up quickly given that a single chemotherapy treatment could cost $100,000. Other expenses fell by the Jesus wayside. Christ. One after another, utility companies cut off their electricity and phone lines, and their car was repossessed. But Laura Greenwood, John's wife, knew their only option was to keep going. I can't tell you how stressful it was, she remembered. You go to bed crying every night, wondering what you're going to do the next day. John passed away in 2012, just six months after learning that the cancer had metastasized to his liver. He was the 13th member of his family to die from cancer since the Trinity test. Greenwood's story highlights the devastating economic impact that years of health problems have had on downwinders. This, in part, is why RECA expansion has struggled to get off the ground in Congress. According to Laura, many law lawmakers argue behind closed doors that it would simply be too expensive to compensate downwinders and cover future medical costs related to radiation exposure. But causing more war, that's fine. What? Yeah, that's uh, good. Yeah. You know, Medicare for all that. fixes this. Uh, yes. Right. Single-payer health right. care in well, that's general. What but, right, but isn't that what Biden said, that it would just be too expensive to give everybody I thought, Medicare for all? I, I, I thought he stopped cancer. Didn't he stop cancer? <laughs> <laughs> apparently today. That's right. Apparently today he did. Apparently, well, he, had a, he had this brilliant idea. You know what? Maybe we should bring back. This is what Biden would do. If I was on his team, I would say bring back nuclear bombs so everyone can get free chemotherapy. Just give everyone radiation <laughs> yeah, exactly. to cure their cancer. Just some strategic nukes That's around cheap, right? major cities. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, we'll take care of this problem. That's like that's like when Trump wanted to nuke a, a hurricane. That's that's how you fix cancer. Is just more radiation yeah, right? right chemotherapy is too <sighs> expensive we got all these nuclear bombs lying around let's just hit two birds with one stone um so advocates of reca expansion also have limited data to back up their claims of a link between the test and later cancers which they blame in part on government secrecy surrounding the event the specter of endless lawsuits haunted the military and most of the authorities simply wanted to put the whole test and its after effects out of sight and mind According to a Center for Disease Control and Prevention report on the history of the Los Alamos National Laboratory, a year-long study from the National Cancer Institute found that no firm estimates can be established on how many cancer cases came from the test due to limited radiation data from Oppenheimer's team and a lack of reliable information on cancer rates and daily habits in rural New Mexico at the time. Senator Ben Ray Lujan, who supports RECA expansion, called the NCI research limited when it was released. But one impact of the test is clear. 
In the months after the explosion, the entire state of New Mexico saw an unprinted, unprecedented spike in infant mortality, with 56% more New Mexican babies dying during live births in 1945 than in 1944. The number went back down in 1946 and has never reached such high levels since, a statistical anomaly with a 0.0001% chance of being caused by natural conditions, according to the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientist. To Nolan's credit, Oppenheimer includes affecting scenes in which the scientist wrestles with the pain brought by his life work, while it leaves out some notable parts of the history, the film offers a powerful and largely accurate account of Oppenheimer's quest to build and later try to contain the ultimate weapon, according to Stephen Schwartz, an expert on the history of nuclear weapons and a non-resident senior fellow with the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists. He says, I don't think it glorifies nuclear weapons at all, which was the concern that some people had, Schwartz told RS. Viewers will leave with a better understanding of why he did what he did and all the complications that ensued. He added, I hope that it sparks many conversations, but Cordova sees the lack of engagement with downwinders as a major missed opportunity. She remembered back in 2018 when the Santa Fe Opera put on a production of Dr. Atomic, an opera about the lead up to the Trinity test, when Peter Sellers, who wrote the show's Liberato, found out about the problems faced by downwinders, he invited Cordova and her team to talk about their experiences on stage before each performance. Bro, that's so, that, that's that's funny. The guy's name is Peter Sellers or Peter, Peter Sellers because Dr. <laughs> right. Strangelove was played by Peter, by Peter Sellers. Sellers. So. Very ironic. Um, yeah. There's, there's, there's no fighting in the war room. So one of my favorite lines of yeah, all time. Yeah. Um, despite her lack I've been saying, of, we should do like a, a a movie night with that movie. I think that movie sure. is really funny. And I'm really down. Great. It was on YouTube not that long ago for people who wanted to watch it in full. It's public domain um, now. It's public it? domain. Yeah. Good to know. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It's been despite years. Her, her lack of luck with the Oppenheimer team, Cordova remains optimistic. She hopes the movie will encourage people to learn more about the impact of nuclear tests and boost support for her cause. Every movement that has ever been started has a tipping point. She said. This movie could have been that tipping point, and it still might be that tipping point. So, that's well, I think it. she's doing a good job so far. Is what I'm saying. She could yep. be bridging the gap, you know. And I appreciate that because there's a lot in that article that I didn't know before reading it, and uh, I, uh, I, uh, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't know that, and I'm glad that uh, she's out there actually advocating for that because that is very yep. important. I do agree with the article that I mean the point is that there should never it should never have been made to begin with, yeah. um, and Which one in, of the and, things was the I was going, go on. Oh, I was talking about uh, you know the scientists that were harmed during this as well, the American GIs that uh, were harmed in this that they literally used as guinea pigs. Um, you know, there's there's so much of like. You know, the U.S. military will go to any end to make sure that they are the sole destroyers of the world. Um, you know, we, we get to that whole supremacy change that we about around that time. Right. You know, and, and then you and they, they've got a, you know, a history of this. Right. Agent Orange at Camp Lejeune. Uh, you know, it, they don't care. Military testing is going to military test. So, you know, but. Not to mention the terrible atrocities at Hiroshima and Nagasaki that these things caused. You know, it fucked up shit here at home. I mean, it was practically a, a tourist destination for people in Vegas at a certain time. Kennedy was out there watching it go up, you know, so hanging out with Marilyn while he was there. But, you know, yeah. so anything to add? I mean, I, I was say. You know what uh, this about like the nuclear bomb is that recently being out in the street, I saw some boomers who were like, you guys don't know anything about that period. It was a good thing we bombed the Japanese because we saved so many lives. And that's a point they bring up in the film. I don't know. The movie kind of leaves it ambiguous as to whether or not that's true. I thought it invited the audience to make that decision. But um and I put out a poll on my Twitter too, because like I have a pretty like good spread of followers. My followers aren't just left wing or right wing. It's everyone in between. I think that's in part because of the interventions. And 
you know, they were it's like a bloodbath in the comments on those polls because they're like, oh, you know, Japan should have been nuked, should not have been nuked. But one thing everybody did agree on was that there should not be another nuclear bomb today. There shouldn't. Nobody should be have a nuclear bomb dropped. And even the people who want deterrence, who say, no, we still need them because it deters other countries from using the nuclear bomb. It's like, well, in principle, that means you're still against dropping the bomb, because if one bomb is dropped, the whole world is dead. What good is getting into a fight with somebody knowing you're both going to die? So, you know, people aren't that that stupid and crazy. So everybody in the world, unless you're like, I don't know, in the Ukrainian government and you're a Ukrainian Nazi, or if you're in the Biden administration and your name's Anthony Blinken, does not want another nuclear bomb dropped in the world. They don't. Mm -hmm. But there are people in Biden's cabinet right now who believe you can win a nuclear war. They, they were they're around during Kennedy. They are around during Reagan. They're around right now. There are people walking around in Biden's cabinet telling him every day, if we just did strategic nuclear bombs here, here, and here, we could win a nuclear war. Yep. Well, we'll just use depleted uranium in the meantime. Um, you know, yeah. that that should do well. Uh, slowly, speaking of which, also, in the where do you think we tested our depleting uranium rounds? Ask, ask the people of Hawaii under that mountain with the observatories on it, that place. Um, it's that, that's where they use it, and they all have their problems, cancer and whatnot. So, and just like ask, ask, what was it? Was it Fallujah where we used a ton of uh, depleted uranium against somebody? Will inform me where we used that in the Middle East that had significant uh, children come with with problems out the womb. Um, 